This is the ZSA Voyager. It's an excellent board, and if you've watched my review, then you'll see me rave about the configuration software for this thing. In most ways, it really is the gold standard. This is the Digma Defy, and in my initial review, I pointed out some flaws with the configuration software. In particular, the way that you configure the mouse feels flawed on this thing. But last week, I actually, by accident, found a thing where this board is actually substantially better at configuring than this board. And it was slightly counterintuitive, but it felt good to make a video about it because it did ignite a renewed appreciation for what you can do with this board. And in particular, it feels like it's easier to configure this board for domain-specific tasks. Now, let me explain what I mean with domain specific here. This is the left side of my Digma Defy, and I've configured it in such a way that if I were to press this key, that the mode of the keyboard flips. I am now in video editing mode, if it were. The big picture idea is that I rest my hand here. This button over here is delete, and I can actually move the cursor or the playhead of my video editing software with these keyboard shortcuts over here. On a normal keyboard, by the way, those shortcuts would be around here on the right hand side. But the way that it was configured was a little bit unintuitive. You can go left, you can go right. And if you want to do a big left or a big right, I would assume you would have to go move your finger more here further to the left or further to the right. But no, you got to pick up your hand and move it around here. So what this board can do is I can tell it to go left. I can tell it to pause and I can tell it to go right again. If I wanted to make a big jump, I can use my pinky more to the left. And you can see it make big jumps. And you can see that I can also do that to the right. Now, what I can also do is I can plant a flag, so to say, move to the right, plant another flag, and then hit delete if I need to edit something out. Deletion really is the main thing that I typically do here, by the way. I can also zoom out, I can also zoom in. And if I wanna go back to my normal keyboard layout, I just hit this key one more time, and I'm back. Now, the thing that I like to configure really is twofold. I really like it that the colors of the keyboard change because the color of each key indicates what the functionality is. If I stop using the software for a while and then move back, those lights actually have a really good function. Another thing that I deem really important is that this is easy to configure. I might try moving the shortcut somewhere, but that may or may not be intuitive. And that is something I can only really experience by trying it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna change the layout a whole bunch. So it would be nice if the editing software was able to make those updates very frequently. So let me show you the one big feature that makes me happy. This is the configuration software. I can go ahead and maybe click this particular key. Uh, let's just make a quick change of color. I can hit save and boom, it's done. I now have a different key over here and I'm good to go. This is where the Digma actually shines. It's just a single click and the whole thing is flashed. And if you wanna be able to configure the different colors for the different keys and have something that's quick to flash, the only other alternative is the Model 100 by Keyboardio. This is a great board. It's definitely underappreciated. But this is where the Voyager and most of the ZSA boards actually kind of fall short. This is what the configuration software looks like for the Voyager. And what you could do is you could say, well, let's maybe make a change. I don't know, change the color of this button, right? You can now hit compile this layout. It's gonna compile. This takes a moment. Then you can click the save to keyboard button. Then you get this screen that tells you that you have to press this reset button over here, after which you can connect to this board, after which it's flashing, and then it's configured. And if you're eager to just say, hey, I wanna try this different shortcut, what happens if I move it here? This is actually pretty darn annoying. And even though I think that in the end, what you can configure on this board probably is a bit more elegant than what you can configure here, not to mention the fact that this is based on open source software, right? Those are all definite benefits. The fact that I can just click a button and it's flashed, Oh, that's actually super neat when you're trying to really make a layout very bespoke for a very specific use case for a very specific app. And for me, video editing is just that one thing. I just hit this one button and then all the keyboard shortcuts are here and it's very easy to change whenever I feel like. I don't know if this is going to make a major impact on a purchasing decision, but I will say it, this has been a reason for me to consider the Digmatify a bit more recently. It's just because I gotta do a whole lot of video editing and figuring out what I like for my fingers for video editing was easier to find out on this thing than on this thing, even though I still love my Forager.